so I'm pretty much done with my 2016 WR250R lightweight adventure bike build. My target was to have a lightweight adventure bike for about $5,000. Bought the bike for $4,216 and after, after the mod I ended up at like $5,029 I think. $5,030, right over $5,000. So pretty close to meeting my target. Yeah, so the big ticket items, the big ticket items were the fuel tank, the luggage, and the tires and tubes, heavy duty tubes. Those are kind of the most expensive elements that I that I added. So as far as maintenance, I changed the oil and oil filter. I topped off the coolant. The coolant level is uh, monitored here through this little window. I cleaned and lubed and adjusted the chain. I confirmed that the gearing was stock, which I want stock gearing uh, to provide the best combination of off-road and highway balance. I, I didn't want very low dirt focused gearing for what I'm going to be using this bike for. I uh, lubed all the cables with cable specific lube to make sure everything is operating nice and smoothly. I adjusted the position of the all the levers and and also made sure they had enough free play per per the owner's manual. I also adjusted the rear brake light switch because the the rear brake light was was staying on when you hit the foot brake. So I adjusted that a little bit out so that it wouldn't be so sensitive. I checked all the, the thickness of the brake pads front and rear and I found them to be to be good. And still have plenty of pad left so nothing needed there like the bike has about 4400 miles on it now so i didn't expect the brake pads to need to be replaced so soon i inspected the K&N washable oil filter uh, that looked pretty clean so i left it alone when i first got the bike i also uh, found the tires over inflated all these are new tires but uh you know i made sure to go down to stock pressures which is 18 and 25 and I've had this in really deep sand and 1825 works fine. It's probably not the best, but when I hit the asphalt or the street, you know, they perform better with that higher pressure. But I found them at 32 PSI each when I first bought the bike. So they're now set at, at the stock 18 and 25 tire pressures. Another issue I found when I bought the bike was that the turn signal was very sticky. So I uh, opened it up and cleaned it out with contact cleaner and lubed it a little bit. And now it works much better. The front turn signal was also not working. I found one of the wires uh, feeding this uh, signal here was broken, so I repaired that. Although not all the, the LED array works, as you can see about half of the array is working now. Though it did pass inspection like that, but eventually I think I'm gonna, you know, get more visible front turn signals likely. The rear brake light, uh, the wire leading to the rear brake light was broken, so I did uh, repair that just soldered it back up. The rear turn signals, the stock ones were broken, so I also replaced them with these Tusk low profile turn signals that I had lying around. The rear license plate light was, was missing, so I, I bought some 12 volt LEDs off of eBay. And, and at night, it's pretty bright. The plate is very clear. I also set all the clickers to stock position. Most of them were in stock position, except for the rear rebound damping was uh, fully fully hard so yeah the rear of this bike is known to be a little bit bouncy so I set it to stock all around but then I did end up going in two or three clicks on the rebound to keep it, the rear and a little bit more under control I also set the rear sag uh, with my weight at about 30 percent uh, although with a full luggage I might need to tighten it up a little bit more we'll see how that goes so that's it as far as repairs and maintenance that I did on the bike but as far as mods, uh, one of the first and most important mods was um, replacing the, the bald stock tires with uh, these Tusk Dual Sports, heavy duty tubes, slime in the heavy duty tubes. There's a lot of thorns out here in the desert. And I also uh, added wheel weights to balance uh, the, the wheel after also adding rim locks, both front and rear. Same tires, uh, same tubes, slime everything both both the same front and back so the stock bars were a little bit bent so i replaced them with these pro taper aluminum bars that are more resistant 
and also have a more of a rise so I don't feel the need to use risers the position is great great for me at about five feet eleven five feet eleven and a half or so almost six feet so yeah this this pro taper bar has a has a good bend it's the SE CR high CR high bend uh, and I had them from my CRF 230F transferred them over and, and they they feel great I also transferred the Zeta hand guards from the old bars over with the integrated signals. I also installed a, a RAM mount from my CRF230F, transferred it over, that I'll be using for my low-cost LG Journey Android phone, which I use uh, with Gaia GPS for navigation off-road. One thing I did in the airbox, which I'm not going to take the seat off to show, but is I guess there was an original flapper valve uh, in here that was removed which leaves kind of a, a gaping hole into the air box and adds, you know, lets more dust get in there. So I just took a piece of foam and kind of plugged that hole. I've been monitoring how the bike runs, it runs fine, so that, that uh, added foam for, it's kind of a pre-filter that I added, doesn't seem to be affecting anything. So another major mod I did was this Tusk ex Excursion uh, luggage. It's the full system with the side bags and the, the larger 22 liter duffel on the top. Uh, I don't have it strapped down right now because I'm not going on a long trip for, for a bit here, but that's kind of how it fits. And when it's strapped down, it's super sturdy. I mean, going through little jumps and desert whoops, it, it doesn't move at all. I also installed uh, the heat shield that it came with it. And yeah, once this strap is, is straps it down, there's no, no risk of, of any part of the luggage touching the, the exhaust. Then on the front, on the Baja Designs, shroud here it was it was very burnt by the sun it was originally blue it was kind of cracked and, and faded and the plastic was degrading with the sun so i i used plastic plastic paint and painted the the front surround i also added a baja designs harness that allows the the lights to have a high and low beam uh, feature which is uh, required for technically in texas to pass inspection and yeah it helped me pass inspection without a problem another mod i did was uh, installing this V-Stream. Was it was actually brand new, but it was from an old FZ1 that I had. But uh, so I ended up making these custom brackets out of steel that mounts into the suspension clamps here at the top, and then into the fender here. It's super sturdy. I mean, it's one of the sturdier windscreens I've ever had on a bike. Actually, it doesn't move much. You know, hopefully there won't develop st stress cracks here at these points. I tried to not tighten them too 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 much. Added washers and used Loctite. But the nice thing about this is that it, the way I mounted it, I mounted it low enough that it actually protects the Baja Designs uh, light as well. And my head is completely over the windscreen, so I'm not looking through it at any point. And it's vertical enough and far, far forward enough that when I'm standing on the bike, I can, you know, going through technical stuff, I can tuck behind the windscreen and I don't feel like it's going to hit me in the neck or guillotine me. Uh, so I was really happy how this turned out. You know, even up to 70 miles an hour, there's really no wind buffeting. So it seems like I lucked out as far as the angle and the shape of the windscreen and where I mounted it. It worked out really, really well. So then another major mod was the IMS 4.7 gallon tank. I've already uh, tested its range. You know, I've gone over, over 200 miles, like 205, 206 miles on the tank. And when I filled it, it still had like 1.1 gallons left. So it should get me you know, like 250 miles to empty, which I'm really looking for just more than 200 miles for the longer fuel stops on the New Mexico BDR. So I'm pretty happy with the tank. It doesn't feel like it added any weight up top for our center of gravity. It's, it, the bike still feels uh, very easy to handle uh, with a low center of gravity. A lot of the, the fuel, the added fuel weight is kind of forward and low in the tank here. When I do move up to the furthest front part of the seats, you know, my legs do splay out a little bit more than the stock tank but you know that's not typically how you're riding and yeah so i i find the tank worked out well no leaks you know that's, an, that's a common issue with these tanks uh, or at least on the older designs older version that it would leak out of this this point here but i did tighten these down a little bit before i installed it and it's it's been great no leak so far so the the previous owner had installed the baja designs light so obviously i'm leaving that alone installed an fmf exhaust a fuel tuner which I kind of would have preferred it to be stock just for greater reliability, but it is what it is. You know, these bikes are hard to, hard to find. And I think these are probably maybe Honda, Honda or Kawasaki mirrors. They're better than the stock mirrors. And until they break off, I'm not going to replace them with, uh, with more off-road style mirrors.
so I'm, I'm happy with those for now. A previous owner had also installed this rack, which obviously has been, been, has been very useful when mounting the, the luggage, because there's two, two points where you strap down here to the back of the rack, and then the other two points are here in the passenger pegs. So an, an unnecessary mod, I would say, is a seat concept seat. You know, I am finding it very comfortable, but the stock seat was probably good enough. You know, I don't, I'm not sure I needed to do this, this extra expense. So I'm not counting this in the budget of what I needed to do to get it adventure ready. It seems like it, it was a nice, nice update. One nice thing is also that when you're standing, because this seat gets wider and you're squeezing the, this part of the seat in the tank with your legs, it prevents you from sliding back on the bike when you're standing. So it lets you lock into the bike better. The fact that this has a, a part that widens out more than the stock seat. So that was a nice benefit that I wasn't aware, aware of. But again, I would say this is not necessary. The stock seat, for me at least, was, was plenty comfortable. Uh, one other thing that I'm gonna do that's unnecessary is uh, adding graphics. The previous owner, for some reason, had removed all the graphics from the bike. But I have a set of graphics uh, on order that should be in on Monday that I'll be installing. Some added bling that's really not necessary. I'm also going to transfer from my WR250F, I'm going to transfer a 12 volt plug, which uh, I'll need to keep my phone charged on a longer BDR. Uh, have, it'll have a couple of U, uh, USB charging points there. And then the pegs, you know, the pegs are a common mod and, and upgrade, which I might do in the future, but right now I'm finding them comfortable enough, especially because on this type of bike, you're sitting a lot more and on BDRs, you're sitting a lot more, I'm not going through hard Enduro stuff with it. So, uh, and with the stiff boots that I have, I'm not finding these pegs to be an issue. So I might just leave those alone, but they could be, that could be a potential future mod as well. So yeah, that's 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 pretty much my setup. You know, I'm I'm been very happy with how the bike feels and rides, and I think it's ready for uh, the New Mexico BDR here in uh, about three weeks. We're gonna head out. There'll be three of us on that on that trip, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll record some videos of that trip as well.